right, guys. Big day here in the lock lab. This just came in. This is from Darkwood Picks, hence the custom-made picks. Take a look at these guys. These three basically are identical except in thickness. He gave me one in 25 thousandths, one in 22, and then one in 15. He says the handles were a design accident, but it came out perfect, he said. You can use it you know, in North American style or... It's just as comfortable picking it European style with the pins downwards. By the way, Darkwood Picks is, uh, deserves congratulations. He's getting ready to graduate high school in about a month and a half. And to do work like this is just outstanding. I remember when I graduated high school about two years ago, maybe, maybe a little more, but I could do nothing like this. This is wonderful quality. This last one is 25,000. It's very fine tip. In it got a little notch there to help you just give you a little bit more reach uh, acrylic handle on this one kind of unusual he said this was an experiment and then he did like a dot matrix of the lock lab logo very cool very uh, very skilled attention to detail I gotta say very comfortable he gave me three challenge locks and a package containing 2.3 kilograms of chocolate I'm sure uh, now these are probably well you know what they are a um, couple of easy sets and a one with his logo or mark on the bottom of there called the screw. We have a Phillips and a flathead, so it's all kinds of screw inside of here, I'm sure. And then we got a couple of easy sets. All these are challenged, by the way, and he says uh, these are no longer easy sets. So let's find out. In fact, let's uh, use one of the brand new picks. We'll try it, see what happens. Um, let's just get this guy, move this out, and I will probably try, it's pretty wide open, so I think I can probably fit, I can fit that 25 thousandths in there. So I'll use that one, let me move the rest of these guys off to the side here, and get a clamp in them, into the camera. Alright, this half of the easy set is normally on the inside of the door, but we don't care. It's a challenge lock, we don't waste anything. Alright, 25 thousandths. And I'm going to call this as close to a short hook as you're going to get. Very nice. Take a look at the finish on this. I mean, mirror finish. Everything's rounded. I have to do nothing to this pick. I'm only counting five in there. Okay, let's try it. Um, here we go. Try this guy. See if he's the right thickness. Yeah, man. All right, let's zoom in. And let's see what we got. All right, all the way in. Very light tension. If his quality of locks are half of what his picks are, we're going to have some problems here. I got a binder on three and no counter. Oh, there it is. A little counter rotation on pin two. See that? We'll pick him first. I got two clicks on him and let me put that tensioner back in there. And we got a false set, so we're on the right step here. Might be a magic pick. I'm getting counter rotation on three. I gotta click on him. And got the false set back. I'm getting counter rotation on four, but I'm not gonna go for it because it's just slight and it might just be because it's pinching the core. I can't tell. We can always come back to him. There we go. I'm getting more counter rotation on, looks like pin one. Okay, I'm going to release a little bit. He's apparently got a nice sharp groove in him. Come on. All right, I lost the fault set. Oh, no, I got it back. And no more, oh, more counter rotation from one. One click. I lost the fault set, so I'm going to give him another one. And there we go, we're back to our fault set. So two definite grooves on him. Okay, that was two, and I got another click. And he turned a little bit further. Very slight on three, counter rotation. I'm going to leave him alone for a minute. Let's see what else we got. I think he's the only one giving any kind of feedback. So I'm going to jump on him. A little bit of counter rotation, I think you can see that. Very little. He's probably a serrated, maybe. And nope, he's acting spooly. I'm getting a lot of counter rotation. Come on. Come on. A lot. All right, I'm going to lose somebody here in a minute. 
And there we go. I thought I was getting ready to lose everything, but we got it open. All right. It's the pick. It's the pick. Yeah, man. Nice feedback on that thing. Easy to position. Perfect shape. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, cut this thing. Oop, other way, Bill. Other way. I'll never get that straight. I have three different cheap Sony cameras, and they all seem to zoom different ways. Um, I have a this guy in here and I do have my I do have a key but I tell you uh, they are mummified and when I unwrap this I think it's probably going to show me the key for all of them but I don't have a choice so let's go ahead and open this first with the new Keymeister knife from Herr Vischer in Switzerland like I said this thing is made in 1712 can you believe it they still make them the same way all right we do have two keys I don't know which is which all right, I'm gonna lock him up. Let's figure it out. Okay, that's that's my luck. It's never the first one. You notice that? All right, beautifully. No grabbing, no snagging, nothing at all. It's very smooth. Let's see what he's got in here. And of course, it's uh, unusual. So I'll use the pick again. It's an unusual tailpiece. It doesn't match up with the Schlage. That would be too easy. All right, we got all that spring, all that stuff. Okay, now we do need that key. And I follow her. Get the medium, let's line it up just right. The pins are gonna come out the top there, so we're rotated 90 degrees, perfect. See what we got. Okay, there's our five pins. I am seeing nothing really unusual right away, but the center one looks like a steel pin, very sharp edges. The rest of them look like stock from the top anyway. Uh, but they're probably not. All right, we have a serrated. We have a standard. We have kind of a serrated. I'm gonna look at him a little closer. It looks like the head of him is a little reduced in diameter. And on the core, I see nothing in there. Nothing, all stock. Uh, this guy. I was going to say it was reduced on the top, but I think it's just a single serration in him. It's kind of a wide serration because we were getting some pretty good feedback from these. There's number five, come on. Number five, so we got two depths on that one, one very deep one and a slight serration, a very shallow one. And then number one, just a regular cut serration. Look about it to be almost the same depth. So very well done on the key pins. Let's take a look and see what you got here. Look at that. That's just barely hanging at the shear line. So really weak spring on him. I'm going to flip him over. Oh, and I was going to say and dump him, but he did finally pop up. All right, we got some serrations on one. I'm going to take that spring out of there, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Wow, I did not expect that. Very long steel spring. I don't know why he was barely breaking the shear line. Wow, where did he go? Here he is. <laughs> All right, we're going to see a very strong spring on this guy, no doubt about it, because he launched... There's the rest of them. It was a pin in pin. So he was in there like that and like that. And there's the spring. It's a tiny little, just a tiny little guy, right? Come on, baby. You know, by now this camera ought to know what I'm looking for. There's the spring on number two. Let me make sure there's, yep, and there's another spring in number two. So we got some definite weirdness in there. I bet the spring was on, we'll figure that out later. I bet it was on that shaft. Okay, number three, I'm gonna try to not let him go. All right, very, it's a T-pin with some tiny serrations. Upside down Christmas tree, very cool. That'll give you a very deep fault set. Next one is a T-pin. I think you can see him sticking up down there. I'm gonna try to grab him. And there's more to it than that. It's like an iceberg, just the tip of it out of the water and the rest of it down there waiting to snag you up with a deep fault set. And 
The last one is a standard pin. All right, the last one is also a pretty powerful spring. Where'd he go? I just dropped him. Where did he go? Oh no, he might have fallen back in there. Yeah, he did. There we go. Two, three. All very long steel springs there in the back. Uh, in the Bible, I don't see anything offhand. No threading or anything like that. All we were looking at is tricky pins. All right, let's get this arranged. And then I want to take a closer look at number two. See how maybe this guy was together. Because he really jumped out of there. I don't know if he'll, he won't fit on there. So I'll bet. Yep. Here's the way this guy worked, I think. That spring was in there. And then the tip of the pin was like that, pushing against him to give you some kind of some resistance. It's impossible. This focus is not cooperating with me. Come on. All right, the spring is in there. That went in like that. So now you have that springy action working against you. And then you had this steel spring pushing on the bottom of that. So all in a stack, the camera's just not going to cooperate, this tiny little stuff. But uh, that's what we were looking at for number two. All right, there you go. Darkwood Picks. Thank you, sir, for a lot of work on the lock, obviously, and also a lot of work on these picks. These are just awesome. And all the sizes that I use, I'm going to hang on to these. Really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. <music>